This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! I'm gay. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Unless you count the two people who were recording Miles Interface Attorney Investigations at 10.30pm yeah. when people were trying to sleep and freaking out over all the crazy twists that are happening. That's us. Hey, yeah. guys. Are Meanwhile, you... everyone's gonna be like, it's the middle of July, Artie. Why are you uploading this? <laughs> well, it's, it's Christmas Eve as it's of Christmas right now. It's Christmas Eve. And it's close to my bedtime, so that's exciting. And what Not better mine. what better way to celebrate the incoming birth of Christ than by playing Turnabout Ablaze yeah. Middle Part Literally, 2? Literally, we haven't seen a single Christmas movie today. We've just been like... Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we're doing Little Feet. I forgot about I literally that. can't hear anything. Oh, now I can we were just laughing. Yeah? You always say yeah, even though it's yes. I know. Because yes. <laughs> she's not someone who would say yes, she's someone who would say yeah. I'm actually with you on that. Ready for a review on how to use little feet? Okay, here we go. Objects outlined in yellow are things that are not present in our time, but were in the past. Things outlined in a dotted line are things that exist now, but didn't in the past. I see. You can examine and interact with replicated people and objects as you normally do. You can even present evidence whether you find it, whenever you find an inconsistency. Oh, and be sure to point out mistakes in the recreation with evidence, too. I think we, I remember now. Thank you for the refresher course, Kay. Yeah, we haven't done this so, since we had to do this on the Haunted House because Ernest Amato bought the Haunted House. <laughs> really? Like, million dollars we just like, have I mean, sure, why not? If there's something you do get about Little Thief, feel free to ask any time, Kay? I've been put in all of the info we got from Gummy and Ambassador Polino. With this recreation, you should be able to tell which changed because of the fire. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's try investigating this room one more time. Yes, let's. In order to find out what truly happened here in this room, we will need to gather more information from this room. It's time to take another look. Looks like it was quite the fire, huh? Yes, it appears that the flames spread fairly quickly to do some to some of the other rooms as well. Yeah, but thanks to Gummy's info, I was able to recreate this room. Plus, the burnt stuff is still lying around, so you can check those as well. The state of this room before and after the fire. I can probably obtain some new information by comparing the differences. Yes, that's what I'll do, and use any new information to complete my logic. Cool. Do you like this, the Little Thief gimmick? I do. I do really like the Thief. So, there is a difference with the clock. Yes, and the then clock there's a difference with the knife and. All right. Well, let's look at the fire first. These must have been the large great green flames that Ambassador Peleno saw. With flames like these, it's no wonder he couldn't get in. Oh yeah, we're sure Maleficent is lying beyond the fireplace yes. in, in the secret yes. room, killing her. And we're sure that Larry set fire to the building. Yeah, and Aladdin was pickpocketing people. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <What one show>. <laughs> <laughs> They're like that was literally last episode, guys. But. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, by the time you came into this room, had the fire already been put out? Yeah, the fire died out or something by that time. Then this fire in here only burned from the time the fire started on the third floor, until the Autograsso appeared and caused a stir in Babal, I suppose. I guess Mr. Polano was just lucky enough to run into the fire as this was burning, huh? Yes, you could put it that way. And since you were the first to discover the body, we can assume that no one else entered the room until that time. No one other than the person you were chasing, of course. I knew it! That person I saw was definitely up to no good. I mean, that person could even be Mr. Coach's killer. That is very likely to be the case. She not. After all, that person came into this room before you, and must have chosen this room precisely because they knew no one would be in here. Okay, then maybe the green fire was where it was to prevent anyone from coming in? But then, what did the person set on fire to make the green flames? Hmm, well whatever it is that person burned, it made a rather sizable fire. And since the fire is green, well, we've seen something that burns green, right? It's a bit tinier than these flames, but you get what I mean. Yes, and I do believe that what you are thinking is exactly why these flames are green. So what I think... Oh, which fire-related Which fire-related piece? piece of evidence burns the same color as these oh, green flames? Oh, duh, it's the beautiful ink. Take that! The source of the green in these flames is related to this. Oh, really? Wait, that was wrong? Well, I don't think they're related at all. Uh-oh. Sorry. 
It really isn't related after all. Hey! You honestly apologized this time for being wrong! What? I'm always honest! And that's a good thing. Now just keep on doing it. Ah, I need to think about this a bit more carefully. What? If I stay calm, the answer should come to me. I thought that was the answer. It's the same as that other flame. What else would it be? Also, Marty has gone on record saying the only way she's going to believe Sheena is not Callisto Yu is if they're yes. both on screen if at the exact same time. they are both in time. the exact same room, especially if they talk to each other. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, we've been in a haunted house. Illusions are everything. So. <laughs> That's true. What else would cause the fire? Is it going to be the... Okay, special... Oh, fire-related piece of evidence. It's going to be the, the lantern, dude. Take that! This silhouette lantern... Its green flame comes from the white cr wit crystal oil it's burning. Yeah! That's the fire I was thinking of, too! I love the green it gives off. I think we've now established that the green flames were caused by wit crystal oil. Furthermore, we know that there is only one other thing made from wit crystal oil. Oh! You mean the thing Mr. Polino was mistaken about, right? Yes, precisely. As we found out earlier in our investigation. Um, what? I don't get it. Can you fill me in, sir? Fine, I suppose. I'll explain it in a way that even you can understand. You use logic? I don't know if you've heard of it before. <laughs> he hadn't until yesterday. <laughs> this yeah. is the thing that was made from the wit crystal oil that Poor Investor Edward. Polano he's was done, like, five about. cases in two days. Yeah, literally. So he's like, just finished going abroad and studying there. On his trip home on the airplane, guy, Mr. Stewart dies. Uh, he gets handcuffed uh, to his chair. Has to solve that. Then, <laughs> as soon as he gets off the plane, it's like, oh, my son was kidnapped. By the way, I sold a haunted, I bought a haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> he has to solve that murder. He then finally gets home to his office. Basketball. Then basketball. basketball. <laughs> we love basketball. We should make it uh, Miles Edge of Investigations 1 give video without context. Sure. <laughs> sure. Basketball. Oh, we basketball. Love basketball. <laughs> oh, and then he learned how to dance the chicken. Oh, he did that before. Your favorite. And then he reminisced about solving, not solving a case like seven years ago. Yeah, and then he was like, oh. Mm, it was dangerous. Huh? Larry set fire to a building, okay. All right, so. Samurai. Okay, this should be the ink then, right? Yes. Bobbily's ink is made from wit crystal oil. Oh, uh -huh. so it should burn the same color as the flames in the lantern, right? Yes, precisely. Yeah, we just jumped further ahead. However, the green flames in this room were not made from a bo bottle of Bobbly's ink. Because we found the ink Mr. Cochin used on his desk, right? Yes. However, we know that Mr. Cochin was smuggling the ink in massive quantities. Now what do you suppose he made using all that ink? I believe what he made with that ink is the answer to what gave birth to the green flames. Oh yeah! I'm beginning to feel real energy coming from you, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> It would appear that I've finally found it, the smuggling ring's real goal. Made of Bobbly's ink, this is the source of the green flames. What? What else is made of Bobbly's ink? All the counterfeit bills? <laughs> yep. What would consume that great volume of an that great of a volume of ink to make? That would be the counterfeit bills that the smuggling ring made and are circulating in Zane Foth. You're kidding! You're saying that it was Mr. Cochin who made the counterfeit bills? I am. I believe you could even go so far as to say that he stole the ball's printing press. Ambassador, Mr. Cochin had permission to freely use the printing press, correct? Why, yes. And I do remember seeing him use it in the middle of the night. Um... But I never did I think he was using it for such a foul deed. Ambassador, because of your secretary's crimes, you will need to be investigated as well. Uh, yes, uh, I suppose so. We've caused a bit of trouble for a few countries, haven't we? It's my duty to search out all who shielded Mr. Cochin and concealed his crime. He did it in the middle of the night, and he's just like, He's just like, He's printing off, he's printing off coupons. It's like, <laughs> one, one in the morning, it's like, Hello, this is Investor Plato. It's like, Hey, uh, can I use the printing press? I'll totally use it just to make coupons. Well, of course, we do <laughs> love coupons. <laughs> I really like doing Polino's voice. It's he sounds, so fun. He's a little bit like um, Wesley, Wesley Stickler. Stickler, but not as obnoxious. I, I kind of just realized, yeah, a little bit. A little bit, but Wesley Stickler well, sounds... Well, let me be perfectly... No. Yeah, it has Actually, it's totally the same it's, voice. It's I just similar, realized. but there's like slightly different inflection, perhaps. Oh, I, I, just, anyway. I literally just realized that's like the exact same voice. And I never even realized fine. it. For they are the ones who started the fire in order to destroy the evidence. 
Counterfeit uh -huh. bills data updated. Okay, cool. Well, we did that. So do you like do you like Little Thief my... more than Logic? Yes. I think so, only because sometimes I'll be like, well, Logic, okay, what are we gonna do? And it's like, oh, we are, I just jumped yeah. to that conclusion. Naturally, yeah. What I think happened is Sheena was the person that she was chasing. Or Callisto you. I'm guessing Sheena, though, and here's why. She goes ahead and she hides behind this grandfather clock so that um. Kay walks in and is like, mm, a weapon, and then she can pop out out of there like her sneaky spy self and be like, Who's there? You are under arrest. Oh, <laughs> be, I like the theory. Cool. I like the theory. This grandfather clock, it was apparently in a slightly different position before the fire. According to staff members, the clock was flush against the wall before the fire, sir. Which means that most likely it was moved by someone during the fire. Speaking of which, it's totally 11 o'clock now, but I don't hear any chiming. Huh? That's odd. It was still chiming right on the dot F every hour this morning. Maybe the fire damaged its internal mechanisms or something? Maybe someone ripped it apart. Uh, no, it is different from the stickler voice. Okay. Yeah. Ambassador Paleno, may we take a look inside that clock? Sure, go on right ahead. Detective Gumshoe, if you could please inspect the insides of this clock. Are you gonna trust him with that? Yes, sir! I'm on it! Mr. Edgeworth, I found this inside, sir! It looks like a length of wire. So this is what caused the clock to stop chiming. But what was a long length of wire doing inside this clock in the first place? Logic. Wire data oh, in the organizer. <sighs> Why would someone do this? It's such a valuable clock. Sounds like it wasn't Mr. Polino that put the wire in there. Then perhaps it was Mr. Cochin's killer who did. Unless it's Mr. Pol like, Polino is just like pulling our leg the whole time. That would be pretty impressive. <laughs> it looks like one of the Bobbly's knives was already missing before the fire began. So it would seem, especially since the other two knives' handles were burned away. The remaining handle was swapped out with the handle from the real murder weapon. And Babal's national treasure was stolen! Poor Babal, don't you think? I'm not sure I would lump the replica statue in with the res rest of Babal's woes. Yeah, they got the real one out of the deal. <laughs> so by this time, the Prima Due statues had already been swapped, right? They must have been, as this one is covered in soot. What lousy timing! And just as the two countries were about to become friends again, too! Not the happy voice there. She's clenching her fists in anger, but... Oh, right. I couldn't tell. It would've been better if I had stolen it for than for it to get caught in the fire. Okay, I think I understand your sentiment. However, if you were to engage in theft, I can't look the other way. Right? If you could please stop stealing my lines. Oh, I should've done that in a British accent. <laughs> Which I cannot do super well. Oh, same stuff. He's not even going to comment on the fact that we're now in a neon green no, we, alien room. No, we, he said that before. He was like, oh, that's what's true. this? It's the charred remains of a fallen ceiling fan. Oh, I've seen a few of these before. They spin around and round and play music. I believe you're thinking of a musical mobile for babies. Yeah, that's it. But they're nothing alike. They're totally alike. They spin those babies right around like a record. You spin me around like a record. Song or something? I wouldn't know. Oh, I don't, I don't know. listen to music. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> don't. I don't listen to pop music. Really. Why is it every single like sidekick girl is like, I'm silly and I'm a high pitched teenage girl? Because that's the only style of the character they know how to write, really. I don't know about that. They have Pearl. Pearl's different. She is different, like, but she's why... also a little kid. Yeah, but why is it like? I will say I, that's kind and of a complete. And Sky and Maya and her and probably what's her face in like other games. There's some chick with a ponytail, right? I don't know. You mean Kay? No, different ponytail chick. I've seen her in, like, ads. But I don't know who she is. Well, that's of no concern right now. Yeah, I know. I see. I guess I can see how you might think that. <laughs> that all the assistant <laughs> that girls are high-pitched and energetic. <laughs> She's like, whatever, man. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I, I wish they would have more unique characters. So, Babal's really into pursuing their tourism industry, huh? Yes, it would appear that way. You know, I'd really love to take a trip. Hey, why don't we take one after this case? Do you already have a destination in mind? Mmm, well, ideally I'd like to go someplace where I can continue my thief training. Agrabal it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to learn the fine art of stealth, perhaps you should visit the studio where they make the Jammin' Ninja TV show. Hey, that's actually a really good idea, Mr. Edgeworth. I can't believe she took me seriously. 
Go visit there. I bet there's another murder happening. <laughs> there always seems to be murders happening in TV studios. As, everywhere Phoenix and Edgeworth go, it's just murder, murder, murder. Yep. They might need to check everywhere themselves. Everywhere we go, Marcy. <laughs> everywhere we go, Marcy, there's a murder. <laughs> I don't remember that, Charlie <laughs> I don't Brown. remember that, Charlie Brown. And a partridge in a pear tree. tree. I love that. It appears that the desk is largely unchanged from before the fire. Yeah, it just got a little burnt is all. It's a very fine desk. I'm sure that even now it's still unusable. Uh, if it's that great, why don't you treat your desk with it? No. It was just a suggestion. You didn't have to get all monosymbolic on me, you know. Syllabic. Syllabic. Oh, crap. I missed an L. That looks like a very comfortable chair. Oh wait, we've seen this, haven't we? It doesn't look all that broken. Yeah, we've seen this. I better not. Curtains! You can see the Alabastian Embassy through this window. So, where were you when you were- <laughs> Where were you when you were investigating over there, Mr. Edward? Hmm. Oh, you can see it from here. I was there on the fifth floor. That's where Damask 2 was killed. What?! You don't mean THE Damask 2! Oh, Poor guy. As a fellow second generation thief, I can't just turn blind eye to this! Even though Damask 2 is merely an imposter of the original? Also, his name was Casino. Oh, the painting! This safe wasn't open at the time of the fire. You could tell because the inside wasn't burnt, right? Yes, and thanks to this safe's fire resistance, the smuggling evidence was preserved. That seems great! They always hold the most wonderful promise of treasures within! Well, this one certainly did have a few inside. That thing! Ooh, a fireplace, huh? So Babal's offices have them, too. Two? There's a fireplace in relatively the same location in the Alabastian office. However, we found something there that I'd rather not recall ever again. <laughs> Old bag's underwear. I still can't believe that we found that undershirt in the fireplace. If it was that traumatizing, why don't you try creating new memories with this fireplace? You could climb inside and we could play hide and seek! And come out covered in soot? I don't think so. Ah, uh, you really have no sense of fun, Mr. Edgeworth! I do want to see, though, if the fireplace opens up, like, in Aurora. Oh. In Aurora? In Sleeping Beauty? In Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Detective, you took part in the initial Babal investigation, correct? Yep, sure did! I also helped put out both fires, sir! But that first fire took me by surprise! I had a tough time escaping the fifth floor! First I tried the elevator, but I guess someone else had the same idea, because it was in use. You don't use the elevator when there's a fire, you use the stairs. But some idiot also did that, so... <laughs> it was Larry. <laughs> it was definitely Larry. <laughs> or it could be like, someone was like, I'll just have the elevator. Vasquez. In, in, in use. It could totally be Sheena. Maybe they were transporting bodies at that point. Oh. Maybe. If I hadn't remembered to use the stairs at that point, I'd be have been burnt to a crisp. Wait, that's odd. We always warn our staff that in case of a fire, it's dangerous to use the elevator. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Maybe someone wrote it in a fit of panic? Detective, did you see the Yadagarasu that came into the Babalese Embassy at all? I didn't personally. And the other staff members told me they never got a good look at the person either, sir. Hmm. I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. Oh, please. The second fire broke out around the time the Yadagarasu was spotted in Alabast. That's also when a suspicious person was spotted in Babal, which caused some panic. So no one was able to get a good look at this Yadagarasu that entered Babal? Yeah. All they saw was a mysterious person wearing a long coat. But that's not enough to make a positive ID, you know. Still, it was enough to make the person, uh, the people who received the calling card panic even more. A person in a long coat? Sounds like the exact same person I saw. The autograph that appeared in Alabas was proven to be just a fabrication. A shadow. <sighs> in light of that fact, the autograph that appeared in Babal is also suspect. Edgeworth's bedtime is also like 11 p.m. <laughs> I am already- I'm such an old man. Like the you are an old man. I'm that's six okay. <laughs> you can't be serious! Uh, oh, she's talking again. Crap. <laughs> you can't be serious! Your bedtime can't be 11 o'clock! Yeah, seriously. No, I was like, oh, I'm gonna rub my eyes for two seconds, and then my eyes said, nope! And then they started freaking out. Not when we're this close to capturing the fake. I mean, close to you! So the Yadagarasu appeared, caused mass confusion, killed Mr. Cochin, then disappeared. 
mean, list of healing potions. Well, I still mute. By the way, detective, why did you not chase after the Yadagrasu? I did! But, well, this embassy is huge, sir. I got separated from the other staff members I was with, and I was lost for a while there. You didn't even memorize the layout of the building you were to guard, Detective? I wouldn't have done that! Yeah, I'll be sure to do that from now on, sir! But you know, it was thanks to me being lost that I was able to come to Kay's rescue! Oh? Is that a fact? Yeah! It was when I was lost and wandering around in the third floor hallway, sir. When I heard a scream, I headed towards it right away. Oh! That's probably from when I found Mr. Cochin's body! Yeah, I thought it sounded like her, so I got real worried and ran as fast as I could. And it was thanks to Gummy that Miss Sheena wasn't able to take me away. He covered for me until you got here, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, I see. So he can be useful once in a blue moon. Still, it's too bad that Agent Sheena got here before I did. Hmm, I wonder where Agent Sheena was before you found her here. Mm -hmm. Well, just before I got to this room, I saw her coming out of the room next door. She was in the room next to Mr. Cochin's. Until, whatever. Agent Sheena mentioned something about chasing the Alagrasu herself earlier. Well, she apparently helped in putting out the first fire. Then, during the second fire, I heard she was busy chasing the Alagrasu. Supposedly. She seems to be a very dedicated agent. You would do well to learn from her. Why are you pointing at me when you say that, sir? We've examined everything in this office, but there is one thing that bothers me. Perhaps I should ask Ambassador Peleno about it. Mm. Ambassador Peleno? There is something I'd like to ask you about. Yes? About this office, it appears to me to be very similar to Ambassador Alba's office. For example, the location of the fireplace and the position of the grandfather clock. Ah, that's right. You've also paid a visit to the Alabastian side of the embassy. Our two embassies actually used to be one. Yes, I know. Even the pamphlet mentioned that. Which is why the building is bilaterally symmetrical. Bilaterally? Yep. So, no matter which room, the location of the fireplace and the like are exactly the same. Even where the art is located is the same, as my room is currently under renovation. We worked hard to make Manny's room look like the ambassador's room. You mean for your handshake photo op with the Jam and Ninja? Yes, that's right. I mean, what's a photo like that worth if it's not taken in the ambassador's office, right? Yet another odd expression of Bilal's obsessively competitive spirit with Alabast, I take it. Thank you, Ambassador. That piece of information is all I needed to connect the dots. Connect what dots? Well, anyway, I'm glad I, too, I was able to be of some help. Okay. Let's logic, logic it out. Logic it out. Connected fireplaces, Ambassador and Alba's bilateral office. bilateral symmetry. Symmetry. That means that the other fireplace can be hidden in. Ooh. Oh, that means Sheena went through the fireplace. Oh, you think so? She was in the other room, so, and rather than so, you think she was the, the person Kay followed, went for the fireplace, ducked out the room, and then came in. <laughs> yeah, well, she, Kay thought she ran into the other room. Kay thought she ran into this room. In reality, she ran into the other one, hidden the fireplace, until she like picked up the weapon and screamed. Did she scream because she not so, found her, or because she, she screamed found... because you saw the body? So she screams. She runs out, and then like. Sonic runs over to her and grabs mm. her. The Alabastian and Babali's sides of the building are symmetrical to each other. As we know that to be a fact, then this room's fireplace may also hide a secret passageway. A secret passageway? In Alabas, the fireplace turned out to have a revolving back wall. A revolving wall? It sounds like something out of a ninja house. Wow, there was a trick like that built into the fireplace, sir? What? This embassy holds that kind of secret? There seems to be a lot about this room that you don't know about, Ambassador. I guess it's time to pay the bill for letting Manny do so much work for me. Please, I really want to know about the real Manny and what you know about this room. <laughs> what? I'm wondering something. Because we, um, Palano seems to know absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm wondering, he looks significantly younger than Manny Cochin, considering his age. I'm wondering if they, like, Swap. swapped... So actually, Manny Cochin isn't dead, it's the ambassador. And then this is Manny Cochin. And then Cochin. this is Manny Cochin. Cause, okay, oh my pull gosh. Up, pull up the organizer and pull up the, the profiles. Because okay. Kawhi is pulling he's, he's 37, 37, Manny Cochin 31. 31. Oh, actually, he looks so old. He looks so gross. <laughs> so gross. But anyway, look, like, go back and forth. Look at how similar their face structure is. 
His hair is in the face, which makes him look like he has well, a Well, this guy face. has a huge tan. You can get a spray tan. It's cheap. Just go to the tanning salon and be like, hello, I'd like a spray tan. Please make me into the pyramids of Egypt. And then go from there. I'm sure that's what happened. Okay, so you have another theory now. And that's just one. I think it's just, I think it's odd that he knows absolutely nothing or is pretending to know absolutely nothing about the room. Mm. Well, what are we waiting for, Mr. Edgeworth? Let's get to the bottom of this. Agreed. And my first thought is that it's likely the killer used the revolving fireplace. Mm-hmm. Logic, logic, logic. Oh, never mind. It looks like it's just another fireplace, though, doesn't it? So, how do you turn it again? In Alabasta, I had to push where the X was on the far wall of the fireplace. Oh, I see an X back there, sir. Let's see what happens when I push it. Ah, you scared me, sir. There is something about this fireplace that lies in contradiction to the facts. Huh? But we found an X where you thought there'd be one, right? We did, but that's not what I was referring to. Something is missing from this scene. What does this contradiction mean for us? Something I won't rest, rest until I've inspected every scene. suspicious nook and cranny. What is the thing missing from this scene? There's firewood. All I see inside this fireplace is starter wood. Huh? That's odd. It doesn't match up with what Mr. Polano said earlier. What is the meaning of this contradiction? What did he say about the fireplace earlier? I don't remember. Did he say there was supposedly nothing in it? Or did he say uh, there was like- let's see, did we get his testimony? Yep. Spilled Bobbily's ink onto the back wall while burning files in the fireplace. Yeah, Left no, ashes there. there's no ashes. Ambassador Paleno, you said that you burned some old files in this fireplace today, correct? Yes, I burned quite a few files this morning, actually. All of the stuff involving me being in the smuggling room, I mean, uh, <laughs> all of my like, old ticket stubs from seeing the Titanic. He's doing, I had a lot of them, you know. He's <laughs> doing the weird hand thing that Dr. Doofenshmirtz does. <laughs> I just watched that episode with the mime that can- The mime? Oh, my yeah. man just like postures! <laughs> yeah. My constant hand! Wait. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. Oh, one other thing I wanted to ask you. Or, no, I'll ask, ask you about me. that. Oh, what about that? Okay, I was gonna ask, is Damon Gant still, like, what you'd say the scariest villain? Or creepiest villain? Um. Because I know you, like, were actually freaked out by Gant. Here's, I was freaked out by Gant because, similar to, like, Doki Doki Literature Club. He just There were so many you. sprites where I was like, he's staring into my soul. This is a little <laughs> creepy. But I think Dahlia... Dahlia's. Dahlia was more evil on, like, an emotional level. Gant was kind of just more like, I climbed my ranks, and, like, he worked hard. It was, he did, he did some stuff. But it wasn't, <laughs> like, okay, all terrible, and he still, like, he still seemed like someone who people, you know, like, invited over to parties, or, like, went swimming with, or went fishing with, versus, like, Dahlia, I'm like, like you a were so, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you get, like, destroyed. I swear, I, if she I, comes back, I'm gonna lose my mind. Or no, it could be Iris. I, Iris I still, still think Kristoff is the creepy. Kristoff is cool, but I some of it has to do with the breakdown, honestly. And also Matt His Ongar is also wasn't, pretty creepy. Oh, Matt Ongar. <laughs> Anyways, all those spoilers from the past games. You it's know what you're getting it's into. fine. Just put your disclaimers in and be like, a war warning. Uh, spoilers. Spoilers from all of our videos. Von Karma likes spa days. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> like, the huge spoiler. <laughs> I burned all of those. And after you did, you forgot to clean out the ashes from the fireplace, correct? Th that's right. But why are you asking? And why are you making such a scary face? I'm sorry. I admit I am a bit intimidating when I'm serious. In any case... <laughs> Your smile. Take a good look at this fireplace and tell me what you find out about it. Let's see. Huh? Where did all the ashes go? Maybe he burned them in the other room. No. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Edgeworth? You don't really think that Ambassador Polano is lying, do you? No, there's no reason for him to lie. And I don't believe his testimony is wrong, either. It is the fireplace that is causing the contradiction. Okay, I wonder if you might update the fireplace data for me. Oh, uh, you got it. I'll add the ashes from the burned files and... Sounds like we've pretty much figured everything out now, huh? Hmm. Well, it was nothing. All I did was follow where our leads led us. Oh, I sense you coming on. You're about to dazzle us again, right? Oh, you mean that? Well, it's what Mr. Edgeworth is known for, you know. 
There is really no need for you two to dance around the name of what I'm about to do. Logic. <laughs> Chicken dance. Bucka, 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 bucka. Logic. Examine. I already checked this area earlier, but it never hurts to take another look. Oh, well, no. All right. Currently undergoing renovation. She, she was in the room next to it. The reason as to why the ashes are missing is simple. It's not because someone cleaned them up, right? No, because even if someone did sweep them up, the fireplace is too clean for that. Ambassador Paleno said that he spilled some Babali's ink while he was burning the files. And yet, there is not a trace of the spilled ink on the back wall anywhere. Well then, I don't know what happened. Well, I'll tell you what happened. The two sides were switched. By using the revolving fireplace wall, the ashes were moved into the neighboring room. Which means that this is a clear indication that the fireplace was used. Wow. Or we could have just moved the fireplace and have seen that immediately. Yep. Look at all the evidence we have. It's insane. Then, you mean, the person I was chasing disappeared from this room through there? Yes, I believe the person you were in pursuit of is Mr. Cochin's killer. And after committing the murder, escaped through the fireplace. Wow, Mr. Edgeworth, you figured out the killer's escape route! I have, but this is only the beginning. Now we have to chase the killer down. She knows. Well, she must have seen it. If the killer used the fireplace in this room to escape into the next, then it's only logical for us to talk with the person who was in the neighboring room. Well, the person who was in the next room was... Oh! It was that person, sir! Is Von Karma? Yes, Detective. Agent Sheena. Yeah. She's using Investigation the master complete. emerald? Oh, that's what it looked like anyway. Sure. I know she turned it off, but it looked like she was like, Master Emerald. Ooh. That's exactly what happened. It's looking more and more like Miss Sheena's the killer, isn't it? Let's not jump to conclusions yet. We need to go through what we know so far. She came running straight into this room from the next one and instantly accused you. Furthermore, she claimed that it could only have been you that killed Mr. Cochin. I don't have any proof yet, however I know she is hiding something from us. Okay then, why don't we go ask Miss Sheena herself? No, not yet. There's something that needs to be done first. Detective Gumshoe? Sir, is it my turn to do something, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, I have a two-part special assignment for you. First, I need you to run a handwriting analysis on Damask 2's note. Okay, I'll get the lab boys on that right away. Second, I want you to see if you can fit through the revolving fireplace wall. R right now, sir? No, next decade. Of course now! We need to <laughs> test our hypothesis first, don't we? Go on, Gummy, you can do it! Alright, I'm gonna do this like a real man! He's gonna get stuck. Here I go, through the fireplace and back! You shouldn't need to psych yourself up that much for some, such a simple task, detective. Okay, I can relate to that though, I have to psych myself up before making a phone call. <laughs> wow! The wall really did the front side of the fireplace really did turn! That's so neat! Now I want to try going through there too! Th there really is a secret passageway through there! I had no idea! Hmm... It would appear that the ash really was pushed into the other room. Furthermore, the Bobbley's ink you spilled, Ambassador, is there on the back wall. Okay, here I go, sir! Oh, oh, oh. Detective, I'd like you to go through there under the same conditions as the killer. Here I go. Huh? But there's all that ash and stuff! And your point is? Now we're short on time, so if you could please hurry on through. Uh, yes, sir. And now he's- Okay! <laughs> and now Gumshoe's uh, coat is black. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. So now we pretty much have the whole picture, right? No, not yet. There remains a few more mysteries to solve. Such as the Autograss's whereabouts, the other smuggling ring members, the two weapons that made it across the border, the key Miss Yu stole seven years ago. In fact, we haven't figured out a thing regarding how Miss Yu is related to these embassies. Mr. Edgeworth? A number of pieces connect in a very complicated way in this case. It's almost enough to make one completely mentally exhausted. What are you saying, Mr. Edgeworth? I thought you were the one who said it's easy if you follow the leads. Hmm. Was that supposed to be an impression of me, Kay? No, she didn't even try. <laughs> if it's info gathering you need, Gummy and I can help with that. Then all you have to do is show off your fancy schmancy logical deductions. Show off? 
Does it seem like I'm being boastful when I do that? Let's not overcomplicate matters, okay, Mr. Edgeworth? We've been so focused like a laser on what only seems to be strange and out of place. It's no wonder nothing's clicked and we haven't unlocked anything yet. We don't have the Magatama to unlock anything. That's true. But if we think things through calmly, the answer should come to us. Okay. That's the sort of thing I say to myself. When I'm practicing how to unlock padlocks, you know. That is something I hope practice doesn't make perfect for your sake. <laughs> Yay, looks like you're back to your straight-laced self again. The gumshoe gets stuck. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm back, sir. Yes, I can see that. Good work, detective. There's blood on his... No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you can use that fireplace like a door, sir. Are you alright, Gummy? I I'm okay. I it's just a bit of ash and dust, that's all. Your jacket has gotten quite filthy. I see the hem has practically turned black. Yeah, well, quite a bit of the unburned ink got on that, sir. Hmm, I see. Thank you, Detective. You did a fine job. Just set fire to Sheen on, see if her coat goes up in flames. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> I'll even sorry. I'll even pay the cleaning bill for your trench coat. What? Oh no, sir! I could never. This is just my old coat, sir. If it was a coat I actually cared about, then I'd get it cleaned. But you know. I see. Very well then. As you wish. And then it was when Gumshoe learned that as you wish meant that he loved her. <laughs> I don't think that's how no, this that, game that's goes. How that that's so, not what the fangirls want. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Actually, they want Edgeworth and Phoenix together. Yes, they do. Even though there is absolutely no chemistry between the two of them. Yep, and no hinting between any no, romantic attraction. No. In fact, it's all but stated that Edgeworth is asexual. Yep, he basically doesn't like people. Which is fine. I mean, yeah. do, do what you gotta do. So, because Gummy was able to climb through the fireplace, we know it can be used, right? Yes, but that's not all we learned. We actually learned one other important fact. And that is... I will have to explain it to you later. Right now, we need to deal with the handwriting analysis, Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir! I'll be back before you know it! The handwriting analysis on Mr. Cochin's handwriting will take a bit of time. Let us go and wait in the Theatrum Neutralis, along with Agent Lane and Agent Sheena. Oh, Agent Lane. Well, we'll have to do that next time on Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations. Thanks for watching, everybody! So, <laughs> things are looking a little bit like you, how you were thinking. I mean... At least Sheena's looking suspicious now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be so happy if I actually am right for once. Because I feel like most of the time my theories are either kind of halfway there, but not really, or like so off. That but there have been a small handful of things that you have gotten completely Matt, right. Matt, Matt on guard scars. <laughs> Matt on guard with his scars over his beautiful hair. You immediately are a Car man from Valkar is the killer, basically. Because I was like, he's, he's such a bot. Four butts to die. Like that was kind of my logic, though. I didn't know how it was gonna work. You thought he was in a Gordy costume and <laughs> swam yeah. out. To <laughs> well, once I realized though that Larry was just an idiot with that one, then I was like, oh, I don't know how he's gonna be the killer. And then he tased us. Yeah, so that's kind like, of a giveaway. So it's like, well, I mean... And that was after we learned he wrote the letter to be, Man, you're in yoga, you're gonna kill this guy, and this is how you're gonna do it. Yep. <laughs> Anyhow, yep. tune in next time. I, I, Okay, I think at this point... I think now we're halfway through the case. <laughs> There's, there's gonna be There's an entire... a ton Wait, left. So we're probably gonna talk to Sheena and then she's gonna be like, Sam, I'm Callisto, you. And then you have to like chase after her. Like at the end of Spy Fox or something where it's like, tap on the... on the. <laughs> Do you think it's gonna turn into that it's kind of turn thing? Into a... Well, I don't know how you could possibly squeeze so much more in. Unless it's gonna be like, there was a third murder. There are two murders and, was... and we're only kind of close to solving the first one. But no one really cares about the second one. It's the last two. <laughs> and just like, well, we caught Callisto you, so no one he just gives, leaves. No one gives a crap about it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Poor Casino. Anyhow, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.